Now, I'm not going to read you this bio. You can download that off your website. But for those of you who don't know me, I just want to touch upon a few things. I've been trading for a very long time. During that period of time, I've worked with hedge funds and thousands of individual traders. I've also written three books on trading, which have been published in seven languages total. And that has allowed me to travel the world, speaking a good word, on technical analysis. And that's been a lot of fun. Now, a few words about my approach. My approach is a conceptually correct methodology based on market psychology. In other words, I'm using technical analysis to read the emotions of the market. It's repeatable. Repeatability is a big thing. There might be some great traders out there that are doing great things, but trying to follow them sometimes can be very difficult. For instance, let's say a day trader is making hundreds of trades a day and you try to follow him. He might be getting out right when you're trying to get into a position or somebody might be following something more arcane and or some sort of proprietary type of indicator which makes it very difficult for you to repeat their performance with everything I do it is repeatable it's simple straightforward it does take a little experience but you should be able to, you should be able to repeat it in time now money management is crucial and cannot be separated from the methodology I often talk about this quite often in fact you'll probably hear me talk about money management more than any other traders out there and it just it's very crucial without a money management plan you're doing from the start also trading psychology is vitally important the best methodology in the world is useless if you don't have the proper mindset to follow it so developing that proper mindset and having that proper mentality is key now keep in mind it's not my way or a highway it's just the best thing that I've found after many years of searching I think we all go on this holy grail hunt where we look for the perfect indicator or perfect indicators and then we reach a point one day at least for me I reach an epiphany where I realize there is no holy grail and that simpler is better and you peel away all those indicators and just go back to the blank chart in fact other than the occasional moving average I don't use any indicators whatsoever now let's talk a little bit about the psychology of the market and your own psychology Yogi Berra once said that if the world were perfect it wouldn't be if you took the word world out and put markets in there I think it pretty much sums it up the market is composed of a bunch of emotional beings and one of those beings of course is you so if you can read the mind of the market read the emotions of the market while embracing your own you'll do just fine and the way you do that is be cognizant of your own emotions and own feelings in trading and in life in general and that's going to help help you wrap your head around the emotional nature of yourself and the market itself remember you're one of those emotional beings there also it's been proven that you cannot make any decisions without emotions and stress involved and that research is based on Damasio and Shaw so we could use this emotional nature of the markets to our advantage provided of course we're willing to embrace our own emotions now before we get into the setup the question is should you trade for short-term or longer-term gains and the short answer to that is uh, yes absolutely when you're predicting a market it's akin to predicting the weather only short-term forecasts are viable so if I look out the window and see it's cloudy and thundering I know it's likely gonna rain fairly soon but I don't know if it's gonna be raining this time next week a month from now or a year from now so with predicting the market it's kind of the same thing if you have a setup you know you have a fairly good chance that the market will move over a certain period of time but you don't know how long it's going to continue to move in your favor now short-term trading has the advantage of keeping your risk small and again you can only predict the short term unfortunately big moves take time to develop and the other unfortunately is that bad things can still happen over a short period of time so if you're only making a small amount of money on each or any given trade I should say then if you get hit really hard which sooner or later will likely happen it takes a long time to make that up so the real money is in the longer term trading unfortunately that's where the risk is and again they're hard to predict so how do you solve for this dilemma well you trade for a short-term gain in fact I'm slotted as a swing trader but I will stick with positions as long as they move in my favor and I kinda like to see it as changing hats from a trader to a trend follower so let's take a look at what that looks like So if you take a look at this trade here we got a fairly short-term profit out fairly quickly it took a little while but we did we were able to make a short-term profit and then once we took that profit off we we're able to trail a stop for a long long time and this is the ultimate goal on every trade to get in for 
a swing trade, hopefully something that happens very quickly, and then stick around longer term in case a longer term trend develops. Now, if you ask me to sum up my methodology for existing trends, I would say that I trade reversion to the mean in the direction of the trend. And that's a fancy way of saying that I trade pullbacks. So I'm looking for a market to be first in a very strong and obvious trend. I'm looking for that market to pull back. And then I'm looking to play that bounce from oversold back up to overbought. Now, if you're picking your spots carefully, that move is fairly certain. Obviously, nothing is guaranteed in markets. But if the market is cooperating, the sector is cooperating, other stocks within the sector are doing well, then your chances are pretty good to capture that swing trade move out. Unfortunately, we don't know what's going to happen longer term. Now, when we get into pullback trade, we look to take partial profits as that market moves in our favor because we don't know how long that market's move is going to last. So we take partial profits and then we bring our stop up to break even. And doing this, barring overnight gaps, the worst thing can happen is we scratch out on the remainder of the trade. It's what I call better than the poke in the eye. You're not going to get rich with this type of trade because you're only making a little amount. And it has the problems I talked about earlier. We're just making a small amount each trade. But at least you make something on the trade. And a lot of times that longer term trend does not ensue. But if it does, we're still in the market via a trailing stop. And again, that's where the money is and that's where it really pays off. So I like to see it as changing hats from trader over to trend follower.